Welcome to my video on the phylum Ascomycota, a subset of the kingdom fungi. In this video, I'll list some examples of ascomycetes, I'll mention their common characteristics, and present their unique life cycles. The majority of known fungi are grouped within this phylum. Three examples are the Pazisa, the Penicillium, and Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Pazisa has a large multicellular fruiting body. It's saprophytic and it grows on the ground and on rotting wood. Whereas penicillium is often found growing on the rind of a citrus fruit. It's also multicellular, but it's more of a mold-like features. Its importance is in its ability to produce the antibiotic known as penicillin. Saccharomyces cerevisiae, unlike the other two, is a single cell yeast, which is often used in the production of beer, wine, bread, and cheese. Other members of this phylum are Canada albicans. This fungus is normally present on our skin. Sometimes it can also cause infections, such as thrush, which is an infection in the mouth. It has the ability to go from a multicellular form to a single cell form, so it's an example of a dimorphic fungus. Next, tinea. Tinea is a multicellular fungus that causes athlete's foot and jaw itch. This infection is generally not serious, but can cause an itchy red rash that forms a ring-like structure or a ring-like appearance. Lastly, aspergillus. Aspergillus is used to ferment rice in the production of sake. It also is not normally associated with an illness. However, if you uh, have a weak immune system or if you have allergies, it can cause infection. So like Canada, it too is dimorphic fungi. The ascomycetes, the fungi that are in the phylum ascomycota, are also known as the sac fungi because they produce sexual spores called ascospores, which are enclosed within a sac-like structure called the ascus. Some ascomycetes don't even produce sexual spores, but are also included in the phylum, based on their DNA analysis. Having said this, the major genetic or general characteristics of the ascomycetes include the formation of septated hyphae, the production of asexual conidiospores, and the production of sexual ascospores. So now that you know a little something about the ascomycota, let's talk about the life cycle of a typical multicellular ascomycete to give you an example of how they reproduce sexually and asexually. Typically, the Pazisa is used as an example. Let's start with two spores of different mating types. These types are called plus spore and minus spore. During optimal conditions, both spores are going to germinate and form a branched septated hyphae. Both hyphae are made out of cells that contain single haploid nuclei. Remember, haploid means that they contain one copy of every chromosome. This number of chromosomes will vary depending on each species. For example, Saccharomyces cerevisiae has 16 different chromosomes, whereas Penicillium has 4 chromosomes, and Pazisa, depending on what species, can have between 8 and 16 chromosomes. The septated hyphae from the different spores will continue to grow, and when they come in close enough proximity, they will fuse together. The result will be a single cell with two haploid nuclei. This cell is known as a dikaryotic cell. The process of fusing two hyphae from, op from different mating pairs is called plasmogamy. As this dikaryotic cell divides and produces more cells, the two nuclei will remain separated until the hyphae is ready to produce sexual spores. The progeny of the dikaryotic cells are shown here in pink, and as you can see, they're going to produce a hyphae where all the cells will have two haploid nuclei. Whereas the branches from the original hyphae where that did not fuse still have only one haploid nuclei. As all the hyphae continue to grow and some will branch, the pink dikaryotic cells will form a special hyphae at their very tips in which the two nuclei will fuse together to form a single diploid nucleus. This process is now called karyogamy. Soon after, the diploid cell will undergo meiosis and form eight single haploid nucleated sexual spores called ascospores within an ascus. Ascii is plural for ascus, as shown in this slide. 
as the ascii mature the uh, the sac will rupture and the ascospores will be released into the air where they can then form another uh, a life cycle so together the network of single haploid hyphae shown here in green or in blue together with the dikaryotic hyphae shown here in pink are going to form a fruiting body so i'm showing you a picture here this is a ascocarp also known as the fruiting body and is supported by the vegetative hyphae that are below the ground the vegetative hyphae are thus are specialized hyphae that acquired nutrients some of these vegetative hyphae can also support aerial hyphae that will produce asexual spores that are known as conidiospores. So the conidiospores will, uh, will come from hyphae where there was no plasmogamy or karyogamy, so there was no exchange of DNA. So these are the asexual spores. Okay, so I'm going to add the complete ascocarp right here to show you what a paziza looks like. The interior here is shown in red, and this is where the ascospores are located. If I were to take a thin slice of this, I show you right here, you can see that the asci are lined up along with single haploid hyphae within that, um, within that ascocarp, within that fruiting body. And on the outside where I labeled exterior is actually the network of hyphae that forms that exterior wall of the fruiting body. So that completes the life cycle of a multicellular ascomycete. Let's look at a single cell ascomycete, and we're going to use Saccharomyces cerevisiae as an example. Like the Paziza, the Saccharomyces cerevisiae are going to able, will be able to reproduce sexually as well as asexually, but they're going to do this through a process of fission, budding, and conjugation. So let's take a closer look at Saccharomyces cerevisiae. We're going to start out with a single yeast cell in a rich nutrient environment. In this environment, it can undergo asexual fission or budding, but I'm only going to show budding on this slide. During this asexual stage, this haploid nucleus is duplicated by mitosis, and the mother cell will grow a bud on the edge. The bud is sort of like an outgrowth in which it will donate a complete set of the chromosomes to that bud. As that bud grows, it will eventually be walled off and it will de be detached from the mother cell and become an independent E cell. If fission, which is not shown here, occurs, the mother cell will still divide the chromosomes by mitosis, but the mother cell is divided in equal halves, and then the two daughter cells will have to grow, will, uh, will also grow and form a mother cell. Like the Paziza, the E cells also have um, different type of mating different mating types. In this case, we're going to refer to them as the types A and type alpha instead of plus and minus. When different mating types come close to each other, they often send out chemical signals that will initiate conjugation. This is their sexual reproduction. So sexual reproduction will begin at the point of conjugation. The two yeast cells will fuse together. Their nuclei, haploid nuclei, will also fuse together to form a single diploi diploid nucleus. The dikaryotic cell stage uh, mentioned earlier does not exist in yeast conjugation. So the fuse pair will come together. They will form a bridge between them where a bud will form, and this bud will grow to and germinate or grow to generate a diploid daughter cell. Now this newly formed A alpha diploid daughter cell can eventually uh, multiply asexually by budding and fission, but ultimately its nucleus will undergo meiosis and form four haploid ascospores, which are all surrounded by an ascus. So this wraps up the life cycle of Saccharomyces cerevisiae. What groups this fungi in the phylum Ascomycota is the fact that they make ascospores, and by DNA analysis, they're genetically related to that of Paziza and the other members. So this wraps up my video on the ascomycota. I've given you some examples of ascomycetes. I've mentioned their common characteristics, 
and presented the life cycle of a multicellular form and a single cell form. So here are all the terms used in my video. You might want to pause it to make sure that you've caught them all. Um, we'll see you next time. Thank you.